before you guys joined and uh, we have one new member who'll be looked at today um and then i'm just wanting to do another round of recruitment so if there is anyone i can email out that language again just encouraging folks to um to join so that we can have a quorum to be able to um be a full-fledged committee and not just take notes um and so uh, that was just kind of like the membership. And then of just quick updates from the city staff of just um, the city committee application updates, wanting to see if there was an update there for, you know, as we're getting new recruiting and getting new applicants, is there? Yeah, so um, we back, so I went back through the, the Wayback Machine because I realized that it had kind of dropped off and are not, it's been on my to-do list, but it has not gotten a lot of attention. Um, so what we did back in March is we did kind of refer it internally um, for review to take a look at the back end. We have, I believe, made a few minor adjustments like contact information. Um, but where it sits right now is it sits with staff, um, just kind of reviewing the items that were suggested by email. Um, and then I think the intent is to come back to the committee to say, yep, this looks good and this is the timeline. Um, given that, what I'd like to propose is that, you know, typically what I'd like to do is um, align with like a key point in the year. So we've got the beginning of the fiscal year coming up. So I think it's actually a good time to kind of push this and get it done. Um, so that then we could say at the start of fiscal 24, you know, we rolled out this new application. Um, and so it's a nice time to turn over because there's a lot happening. I mean, and it's sort of old habits die hard coming from the finance office, like July 1 is when everything starts. Um, so what I was thinking is that if, if the committee is good with that, that's what we'll pursue and sort of trying to get things, uh, short up so that then we have the, the recommendation I, based on what's being suggested. I don't know that it'll need to go to council per se, and it may need to just be an administrative review internally, right. and then we'll brief council through the weekly memo that it's been done. Um, so that then, you know, cause I, the content isn't like. I think it'll help. I think it's a good recommendation. I think they need to be aware, um, but I don't know that it's the level where they need to review it per se. So um, that's where we are right now. And if if folks are good with that approach, then that's what we'll do. If not, if if you wanted more of an accelerated timeline because it's been hanging out there for a while, which I totally get, um, then we'll work to that end and try to maybe bring something back by the next meeting. I feel good with that um, timeline and mostly because I think that the way that we're going to get new members is with our personal relationships and reaching out to people one on one, as opposed to I I I I think when they get to the application, that'll be really helpful to have it in place. But I I think that you know, our it's it's going to be that we have a conversation with somebody that's going to be the reason they even go and fill out the application. It feels like so. Well, yeah, we waited on doing a lot of recruitment for months because we were waiting for the new application and then we moved forward on recruiting anyway. And I think Michael and I, I mean, yeah, I think I reached out to like at least 20 people and got like five bites, but no one actually submitted the application. So, and Michael was saying too that, yeah, he had like three people interested and none of them submitted the application. So, and we got one that was a we, someone we don't know. So, which is very exciting. Um, and yeah, and I think, and because it's also not just for us, it's for all the committees, right? It's the same application across the board. Yeah, so, yeah, and so that's so. where the sort of delay, I mean, I think it's just because there are sort of some nuances there that we want to make sure that we're kind of above board and making sure that we've, you know, checked in to make those changes. Um, and so, yeah, so it's, it's, it's is that you as a staff per person or is there someone else just to so it's it's mary yeah. and i it's the city manager's okay. office okay. um just kind of working through that and you know truthfully um okay, great then we don't have to bring anyone else in to <laughs> talk to us about it. i mean it's like so okay. it's, it's really and, and what yeah. has jammed me up is just scheduling you know yeah. and so it's one of those things that's on my list it's something that needs to be done it's important I just haven't a matter of when yet. I, I mean, totally so get it obviously <laughs> right. as the, all the snafus of scheduling right. this meeting it's working. so are the other 500 things on your list right yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean you know I, I but I also yes thank you for recognizing that and thank you for um understanding I also feel a little bit um like you guys have asked for this and I know um so I want to get it to you and get it done um so if you're good with the timeline, I'm good with deadlines. When I've opened into things, I'm like, oh, this is on the list, but right. it doesn't have a deadline <laughs> attached to it. So, okay, I will get to it. <laughs> so having a deadline is really helpful for me. 
And then the process for stipends for public meetings or um, other activities, not just for um, committees and the board, just because we are, we have so much flexibility, like not so much flexibility, we have so much more budget than we're going to be able to spend this year. And it's now May 24th. So it's probably actually like not probably going to be able to happen before then, but like, I just, if there is any update on the process there and if we should write up a proposal or like a specific proposal or a more open-ended proposal. Yeah. I think having a proposal would be good. I think again, because of where we're at, um, you know, we sort of, year. yeah, it, it would be good for fiscal 24, you know, so that we can kind of, and it's actually kind of a nice way to do it in that, you know, we can take a look at what we ended up putting out to date um, or in this first pilot year. Yeah. Um, and then from there, kind of looking at like, okay, we were going to expand the program and see what happens. Um, because if there's funding there and there is a need and yeah. we can open it up to other committees, then we should do that because that's the intent is to get people involved. And it's, you know, city service generally. So I think that makes sense. But I think having a proposal on the table just to say, you know, we, we've evaluated this program. This is how much we were able to, you know, put out um, yeah. this year. Um, seeing that, we would like to expand it, expand the scope a little bit. Um, so yeah. if, you, if there was a recommendation from the committee, that would be really helpful because then it just is something that then we would have as kind of a marker for what we want to do next. So then maybe like in July or like the beginning of the fiscal year, could we get a, that ref, like the full report of, well, and it might take, there might be like a lag time. Maybe it'll, it sounds like maybe it would be August. Yeah, so yeah. August would be really good. Um, yeah. I think we probably would have some preliminary numbers in July. Um, I know that when we're carrying over into the next year, there is a little bit of a lag um, yeah. in getting sort of those financials tied down. And that like people can still submit for a month after the meeting, oh, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's well. yeah. So I mean. We've got a little bit of time where we, in June and July, still will see some of those, you know, the tail end of whatever yeah. is coming. Well, yeah. I'm most excited about this, you know, because um, I our goal will be to recruit for people with lived experience and for our youth panels. And that is where we feel like, you know, that's that's it's been difficult for us to do either one of those. But I think with that incentive and, and, you know, some of our folks who we work with are interested, but it's, it makes it a lot easier for them if there's the financial incentive too. And I think especially for our youth program and with the youth, you know, if we're getting them as, as uh, sophomores or juniors, it encourages them to stay with us until they graduate. We're not going to have them after they graduate. So like there's limited time for each of those kids and you know, the, the, um, the benefits to them, it's not just the money, but there's a lot of, of other benefit to them. So I appreciate that we're going to move forward with this. Cool. And then I think, um, the, then just going out to the strategic planning pieces, there's kind of two questions here. One is just on the process and role of CJAC versus city staff. I think there's a both, these are both on Michael. So I hand it over to Michael if I, if I should take notes and trade off there a little bit too. But and the city celebrations and recognitions project, um, I think Michael did a bunch of work on this last month and we talked a bit about it. And actually, maybe can we start with that one, especially um, since he is here and we can, yeah, just like report back on like our current thinking um, and because I feel like I kind of came out of the last meeting feeling very, very stuck of wanting to say, like, we don't want to to write or we don't want any type of report that we're coming out with to say, hey, city staff and city organizations and city groups, we want you to appropriate other like celebrate like other culture celebrations to be able to like check the boxes to say like we're 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 having other different groups like you know like we're having someone who's you know is going to be celebrating something that they've never celebrated before and so just feeling tr and like or feel people have people feel like that they have to represent their culture in their community as part of their role in their like city staff or city like role or whatever um and so i think but also want to like 
show like do that evaluation and see where the city is at um in what are the celebrations and recognitions that we do as a city and so I think Kelly like there's a new communications person going on and was like that seems like the easiest thing just to like start with it was just to say like what are like recognize that what you know being mindful of all the different cultures and um communities that we're recognizing on social media right that we're not just posting like Merry Christmas uh, you know but that we're like you know uh, like making a plan for the social media postings but um after that kind of feeling a little bit stuck on like what the next when well, that seems like an important next step and um not sure what the next steps are after that how did I do on reporting back on that those were my feelings coming out of the last conversation but if I don't know Michael if you want to well, I guess um, I have been thinking that a baseline is that we can we assume can we assume that every federal holiday is also a city holiday? Yeah. No. Well, sort of. I mean, this is, so Juneteenth, for example, is a federal holiday. Um, we have some. Um, we have sort of a trade-off within the contracts for days off. So there's kind of like a floater out there for it. And so I guess you could kind of make the connection. However, we are still actually in the office um, on that day. And so sort of, the answer is sort of. Um, and so the way that that is sort of played out is, you know, not a direct correlation, but there is a correlation or there is some thinking in our personnel plan and in the union contracts. Hmm. Of course, it's a complicated answer to a simple question. Right. <laughs> it, it's always those ones. That are yeah, of simple. course, that's what I expected. But but um, well, so but we but everyone still gets like Bennington Battle Day off, for example. Is that no? Okay, and that's not a federal holiday, right? State right. holiday. That's why I was yeah checking with that. So that was a you know kind of a hard. Uh, transition here to working for the city i worked for the state for this and always bennington battle day that was awesome you know what i mean and then i get here and i'm like nope no bennington battle day so can we invent a battle that my pillars right. is all <laughs> um right and just of what are those different holidays representing right. to where they for is yeah yeah i mean i think with this you know um I do think that coming up with a plan on recognition would be really good so we can be consistent and then also to make sure that, you know, we are um, really reflecting what the intention is. Because right now, I don't know that we do a very good job of that. And I also think that we almost ought to do nothing. But there are some instances, like, for instance, we're doing Pride Month, so that's coming up, and there will likely be a Juneteenth resolution. Like, there is most... Um, years which is great um but then you know it's really thinking about like there are other um months too that we should like black history month we should celebrate we should celebrate asian pacific islander month you know there are, are some that are mainstream but then there are some that aren't that will want to you know call out i think um in, in, in a respectful way so that we're not you know just appropriating or doing it to say we did it because i also don't want that either like i I think that we do really want to make sure that we are representative of the what we intend to see. You know what I mean? Like I think we want everybody to be feel included here. We want to make sure that you know everybody is um, you know recognized, but also just you know making sure it becomes something that we we do. So just gathering that list. It, um, of what we already do is that how complicated is that going to be not very um because in terms of we, we have a handful of sort of uh public outreach things that we do around this type of um mm -hmm. area we don't do a lot and so that's where it's like you know uh -huh. it would be sort of starting this off well, and that's what we were saying, too, is, like, of what the city recognizes versus, not versus, but and all of the different organizations and, uh, well, what am I trying to say? Like, like if all the other groups that, like, are affiliated with the city and get funding from the city and, like, have that strong tie to the city, right? Like, the Montpelier Senior Center, like, the Montpelier Alive, like, you know, like, there are so many different groups that have that, like, really, like, 
kind of represent the city in that public way, even if they're not like the city council making a resolution um, as well. So does that make sense? Yeah, I'm gonna confuse looks, so. Um, so I, I, I think that that's a conversation and I, I in my mind, I think you are, um, so like the, depending on what the intent is in um, recognition. Yeah. And so, you know, um, like for the senior center, for example, um, you know, it's sort of that would be maybe age specific or, you know, making sure that we're being inclusive in that way. Um, but in the sort of, you know, uh, making sure that we're doing right by Juneteenth and making sure that that is supportive of what we as a community really see or making sure that like we are putting out, um, you know, a communications plan and strategy on, you know, celebrating, you know, um, just the different months that there are. And I think so, and what I'm also kind of hearing is, you know, the desire to have an understanding of what other organizations kind of like ours might do. But then I also saying that it's like, well, what do we want to do? And then let's propose that. Um, because it doesn't necessarily need to be in alignment, although it might be a good way to look at it. So we might look at other capital cities and yep. see what their communication strategy is or we might take a look at other state government or entities that you know are similar sort of in composition um but e even if we and then and then as a group you know even if we might not have um a specific group on staff for example does it mean that we still maybe have a celebration around that and I, I think the answer is yes because I think we want to be inclusive of all um but you know so what are the parameters of that you know and I think that, that that's a conversation so that this is one of those ones where it's may seem simple but it's it's not a simple conversation yeah. um and I think it's creating the space to have that you know what I mean and I think this group is actually a, a good group for that where it's like you know let's have that conversation let's make that proposal I have no problem, you know, pushing the envelope a little bit, you know, um, and I, I think that generally um, council is, is very supportive of these kinds of efforts. So I'll leave it there. I'm also curious on um, if there's a, a survey that comes out to employees, if on there there's a question about holidays or what would you like to celebrate or something like that, I don't know if that's appropriate, <laughs> but I think um, knowing what our holidays are, because I think when you're hired, you get a paper and it says what holidays we celebrate um, or we have the day off for. Maybe if we had something like a survey that says what holidays, you know, do you feel recognized or something like that. And also a process if um, someone wants their holiday to be recognized, how you do that, what the parameters of it are. Because my question when I first thought about it was, huh, I wonder if they would at least do an email that says, you know, it's Black History Month this month and just, you know, have people think about that and what it means to them um, and that kind of thing. I think, yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Kia. Uh, and to be transparent, we've had these conversations in our office, actually, at our staff meetings. Um, I, I think of it, so I have never seen that anybody at City Hall, of course, I started in 2020 during the pandemic. So, the you know, to like have a, 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 um, a holiday or a Christmas party or anything like that, there's been none of that. But I would love for there to be a plan so that we know, like, because in every month of the year, there is some recognition of something. So I'm in the, I do work in the domestic violence world, right? So I'm in touch with that. And so April is, April is either sexual violence month or domestic violence month. And then October is the opposite one. So, so if we, in our communication plan, we are at least just putting something out, even if it's a front porch forum post that just says from the city that we recognize this is happening in a quick blurb about the importance of what that is, right? I think I think that that if it, because when we when we go to further <laughs> and say what are we actually going to celebrate, I think that's a different that's different. And this all came up just because some folks 
you know, in DPW, um, for some reason, want to celebrate um, St. Patrick's Day. And, and so it's great to have that conversation. But I, I think, um, you know, if everybody is on the same page and we come at it, that we're not trying to shut anything down, but we really just want to add and say, this is what we recognize. And that, I think, will help people feel more included. So, and knowing that there's a, that they're going to do something at the water plant now for Juneteenth, that's awesome. You know, that moves yeah. something, something else forward. So. Yeah, I guess, is there like a staff feedback form that gets filled out? Well, anyway, it's funny you should yeah. ask. Um, we, yeah. one of the things that I want to do um, is an employee engagement survey. We have not <laughs> done one. <laughs> I think it would be, it's a really good time to do that just because of the lay of the land. You know what I mean? When you think about just coming out of the pandemic, we're dealing with recruitment and retention issues, depending on which department you're talking about. I mean, generally our staffing levels are pretty good comparatively. However, um, in order to keep it that way and to keep things healthy, we do need these types of engagements with folks um, to really kind of see what's happening and what's going on. Um, we did the National Citizen Survey this past um, fall, and it's a two-year cycle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and so there is a survey associated with that survey um, that we could do for employees. Whether or not we do that, we, we may not, depending on if we want to. What's nice about that survey is it's, it is statistically significant. Well, actually, it would be dependent. But um, what's nice about that one is that it would be benchmarked against other um, communities of our size and um, sort of population demographics. So you can kind of gauge where you stand against other communities, you know, with certain questions. So like this would be a good question, I think, in terms of like what we would want to celebrate. Um, we've also thought about just developing that on our own internally. We have two tools. Um, one is Polco, which is uh, affiliated with this National Citizen Survey. And then the other one, we're starting to roll out, which is more project-based and more engagement-based in terms of um, being able to engage people in real time. Um, and that application is called Zen City. So there's a couple of different options for us to be able to utilize the city's platforms to do, whether it's a citizen engagement survey or to do some of this work around, you know, um, evaluating how we want to, you know, approach this or, you know, what what will help inform a proposal for a communications plan. So it sounds like we've got a plan for soliciting feedback from staff members and from, you know, long term from the city, from residents on soliciting recommendations for like recognition. Um, I also think um, for like more like the communications things, there's this question of reaching out to other capital cities. I like don't quite know how to do that, but I think I might reach out to Gare with a like government alliance for racial equity i think is what it's called um to get a sense of like if they have any recommendations for like like i mean it's like specific around racial equity but like i yeah communications exemplar models or something like that um yeah other thoughts on next steps yeah i mean we, i think we were initially thinking i was really want pushing for trying to do like just like a report on what we have done without like acknowledgement of what the next steps are and it seems like maybe like we don't need to do a report like what we need is just to like do the work and so um and that like that yeah doing a report without the recommendations of doing the work could be problematic and so um I think that feels like good next steps to me but yeah definitely open for other reactions this this is just occurring to me right now but um I, th I think one of the one of the things that we have as city employees is optional holidays. So I look at that as an opportunity. It, it while it's not recognizing a particular holiday, um, but we do have that, so we can use that optional holiday as a holiday, right? So that's that's also a benefit. So I think, you know, no matter how we go forward, I think just making sure that we're mentioning that that we do 
provide something for folks to be able to celebrate, even if it's not, you know, a, a, a state recognized or a city recognized holiday that's connected to something else. Yeah, that's the sort of gray area. I mean, yes, that's what we do, that's the intention. Um, and that's sort of the where, where we make that connection. It's, it's not direct per se. Um, I mean, I also think, you know, this conversation probably would be good for new members um, yeah. to kind of walk them through like, okay, you know, we had this conversation and, you know, this is what, at least we could bring some of these ideas forward for conversation, you know, at a future meeting. And so then, I don't know, maybe back over to you, Michael, for the process and role for CJAC versus city staff long term. So of like the potential of hiring new staff, that's been your drumbeat for a while now. Um, so if there's any other kind of intro to that or, and then to Kelly for reactions. Not sure what you're asking me to, to, to do. Yeah, I guess I'm not really but sure. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Um, just on the agenda, it's like, what's the process and role for CJAC versus city staff long term? So, um, you know, this potential of there being like a sustainability director, like a racial equity director um, as a like staffed role in the city. Um, and I think like, yeah, I'm picking on you because I think this was your initial idea and that you you brought it up over time and that there hasn't been any movement on it and it's on the agenda so okay it's been so long i forgot that i had made that initiative <laughs> <laughs> okay um <clears throat> well i suppose I, I still think sort of having having a you know in front of us a list of what is what is recognized now you know where yeah. are the holidays um, that's a, 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 it's a concrete place. Okay, we've got that covered, um, and then we can go into the next level of well, how do we? What do we do? What what does the city do to acknowledge that? Other than you know, close down city hall for a day or something like that, um, or a lot, you know, or, or permit a, a parade if that's part of a, the process. Um, but I do see just getting the getting the baseline as important. So uh, we're not constantly sort of fishing around. Is it, are we covering that yet? Um, that, that's what I had in mind. You want more from that? I mean, is that is that? Yeah, I wasn't planning too much going in, but I mean, yeah, Kelly, I'm kind of like right. Maybe that's it. Maybe we just hold off from there. As long as there's other thoughts for the moment. Um, so just, it occurs to me, you know, in having this conversation and talking about strategic planning and talking about sort of the, you know, clear sort of delineation of the fiscal year starting, um, you know, thinking about a year in advance and what are some of the things that the committee would like to accomplish. Um, and so with, with this item, like with thinking about, you know, the committee versus city staff versus a position, you know, what that means. Um, and how we would roll that forward if that's what the city would like to focus efforts on or the committee would like to focus efforts on because I think ultimately, you know, what comes from this committee is advisory and it would advise council. I, I think that they are still wanting to really do this work and so it's important. And so I think looking at the strategic plan and coming up with some some key things that you'd like to accomplish and then from there, you know, I can be available in terms of what resource levels are available what connections within the city like for example like what do we currently have for um city holidays so we would just take a look at the personnel plan and that's where it's published and take a look at each of the union contracts and that would give you pretty much what you know is covered for city holidays and then from there you know you could take it from there so that there is source documentation that i could certainly help with or you know there may need to be connections with citywide communications, so through our communications coordinator or through HR. Um, so some of the conversations that have been happening within this committee, you know, I have been briefing HR on so that we can start that conversation. So there is some behind the scenes stuff happening, um, but maybe not reported out to the committee. And so maybe that would be helpful so that then, you know, that conversation could happen. We could have, you know, a guest appearance 
by either Evelyn in communications or by Tanya, our HR director, um, so that we can kind of, you know, talk through some of these things with the experts. Um, and so that's where we could kind of, I could make those connections for you. Um, or if, you know, there is a specific item that you want the city staff to <clears throat> look into, depending on what it is, um, you know, we could certainly help support that. Um, I think in terms of having a, a director level position for this work, I, you know, I think we would need to look at what that looks like, what that would entail, um, and what the proposal would be, because that mm -hmm. would be something that would need to come through the budget cycle. Mm -hmm. And so the budget cycle starts um, in October and then carries through January. Um, so just those, those things, thinking about them. Um, but I think in terms of items within the strategic plan, really starting to kind of figure out what the key initiatives are and then, you know, what the strategies would be or activities would be around those goals um, would be really helpful to kind of work through that. Oh, one of the goals that I have is that, um, and Kelly and I talked briefly about this the other day on Monday, um, and I didn't state it as a goal for this committee, but, you know, I would love to see that all of the city staff are um, regularly engaged in, in uh, you know, equity conversations, right? Like that there's, that there's real, real, some real intention around that. And, you know, from my perspective as a director, you know, we're doing, we have an initiative going right now in my department and I feel like you know, all of the directors ought to be, you know, ought to be doing the same thing in their own departments. And, you know, everybody's at different places. And and also because we just started this racial literacy uh, training, understanding how much of the work is actually internal, right? Like how much of it is just starting off by looking at myself. So, you know, we're all in different places, but that's something that I would like to see you know, like what are what are other cities doing, and what's something that would be really um, workable uh, as a way to just have everybody who's on staff in the city be having those kinds of conversations on a regular basis? Because it's work that needs to be done constantly and with intention. So is, should we just talk about next steps then? So if I, you know, do this, uh, reach out on, um, okay, I also wanted to propose it's like summertime. I know things are going on for folks and also this is like a Wednesday morning. Um, But um, do we want to meet like monthly over the summer? I think we had done that in years past um, rather than biweekly. Um, I guess I'm mainly looking at you, Michael. I, I'm I I'm uh, what I'm going to be here all summer with one exception. Cool. Um, so I'm I can manage it either way any kind of schedule that you like like. Right, and we meet by Zoom anyway. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. Okay, but so should do we want to meet again on June seventh and make a plan more for the um you know, report, I mean, this is where I'm like, what are, what's on our agenda for our next meeting? Because we got a lot of stuff coming up in like mid-July with the report back on the funding for reviewing the document, the, um, the, um, the form for folks to fill out. Oh, sorry, I don't have that in front of me right yeah, now. Okay. But um, yeah, I'm kind of like, what are, if we were to meet on June 7th, is there? So I just want to put this out there and, um, and do, do not by any means uh, schedule when I'm around, um, but I will not be um, here for the month of June. Um, because Over I'm the whole month of June. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going away to do a training um, and we'll be gone for cool. June. Um, 
so when I get back, I will be available. Um, so July is perfect for, you know, the stipend and the, the committee application. Um, but if you wanted me to be involved in sort of next step conversations around, you know, strategic planning or the like, um, I, I can be, I just can't be in June. And then, but Carol will, it, depending on Carol's schedule, she, she may be available for that. So I just wanted to throw that out there. What would be helpful is maybe um, selecting a few dates. Yeah. Maybe getting those on calendar so that we can make sure that Mary's aware, make sure that we get them kind of prepped and ready yeah, to roll. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that I was thinking about with the agenda, I mean, I know that we should have specific items, but maybe we want to keep, make them a little bit more um, general so that we might have a, a, a an agenda template that we use yeah. that gets posted um, so that then we can, you know, modify that. But at least then it just creates kind of the cover for everybody to streamline it a little bit, make it a little easier. Um. I wanted to propose, okay, what if we do a monthly meeting? So we do um, June 14th, and then we do July 12th as the next two meetings. Any concerns with that? Mm-hmm. Just looking at my calendar yeah. <laughs> to know for sure and let's see if I've already got something scheduled on those days. So you said June June 14th and July 12th. Yeah, I can do both of those. That's actually better for me because I'm not available on June 21st if we're sticking to the every every other week. So um I'm just thinking then that gives us two weeks or like, you know, for the fiscal year, getting that report back from Kelly um, for recruitment, things like that. And then in August, are you suggesting we go back to every other week? So, so how would, that, what would that, I, I just want to make sure that I have it on my calendar because I know what will happen if I don't. I know. Schedule. So then, yeah. So then would it be July 26th and then August 9th? How do folks feel about that? that right now that works for me <laughs> and we can just plan out from there so august 9th then august 23rd then september 6th yep okay so i'll email those with kind of like more of a template agenda great awesome A46, so much for being a short meeting, but 15 minutes early. Um, thank you all so much.